Now, Mr. Speaker, you know that I'm a by-the-book kind of guy. <laughs> I have always respected the rules of this House and always obeyed its protocols. And for that uh, reason, I would never dream of pointing out that my family has joined me today <laughs> for my final speech. It, uh, it would be wrong of me to point out that my wife Pam, my daughter Simon, her husband Oscar, my granddaughter Ella, and my sons Adrian and George are in, are in the gallery, so, so I won't do it. <laughs> but Mr. Speaker, you know that those who work in this House and have families know all too well that political life is demanding on those families. So my first thank you goes to my loved ones. Thank you for allowing me to engage in politics for more than 17 years. Thank you. Switching to my fellow caucus members, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for expressing your thoughts and feelings to me over issues that were of concern to you. I'm not the most demonstrative person in the world, but I did take it all in, and I truly believe that through our exchanges, I became a better MP and a better minister. I also want to thank you for allowing me to express my views and for listening to them respectfully, even when you didn't agree with them. And to those sitting across from me, I want to say that I enjoyed the thrust and parry in this chamber. I've always viewed you not as enemies, but as adversaries, and there is a difference. I know that every single one of you comes here wanting to make Canada a better place. We might have different views about how to do it, and that's fine. But when it all is said and done, there's much more that unites us than divides us. So my challenge to you is to find your better angels and put away the anger and false indignation. Criticize by all means, but do it with respect and maybe even wit. Make Canadians proud of this House and the people in it. Nothing is perfect in this world, but I'd like to think that I always did my best to try to make it better. And although my gaze will remain on the future, as it always has, I hope that you, the young people of this country, will fashion that future and protect our democracy. Now it's time for me to go. It's been an honour serving my country alongside all of you. Thank you and farewell. Last fall, I sat down with my family, and uh, I was 73, and uh, I'm 74 now, and, uh, and uh, basically, uh, I think they wanted me to sort of uh, take some, say, you know, to, to, to go to uh, retired life so that, while well, I'm still healthy and we can do a whole bunch of things, and uh, I promised them that I would leave after tabling the uh, report on medical assistance in dying. And uh, that was tabled on the 15th of February, and so that opened the door for me to leave today. On a personal level, um, this is the end of my political career. And any end of any career is always an emotional time. But it's also, in some ways, the end of my professional career writ large, because I'm not looking at going to another job at the moment. When I left the Navy, I went to become an astronaut. When I left the Canadian Space Agency, I went to become a politician. So now I'm not going towards something. I've climbed all my mountains, and I'm very happy uh, with that, and I want to spend my time with my family.